I'm Rajiv Ram, a professor of electrical engineering here at MIT. I'm also the associate director for the Research Lab for Electronics and the director for the Center for Integrated Photonic Systems. SIPS is the Center for Integrated Photonic Systems. And what it does is it's basically a community of faculty and research the whole research groups, the graduate students, that spans the entire institute. MIT has had a long history of innovation in optics and photonics, including early work in the lasers through a lot of optical applications, optoelectronic applications. The faculty have done outstanding work. The field has moved a long way commercially as well, so it seemed to make sense to get industry involved with the faculty to challenge the, the to take on the challenges for the next generation of products. Photonics is a field that draws researchers from many areas, and in many of the technologies require advances in materials, devices, simulation. There's issues around chemistry, issues around the physics, issues around the electronics and the optics. So you really need people with a lot of very technical backgrounds to pursue these problems. Before SIPS existed, certainly like there were individual research groups that were sort of world leaders in their particular technology or the science that they were pushing. And what SIPS has tried to do is it's tried to bring, you know, industrially relevant ideas to the attention of those researchers. It's always very inter interesting to think about where in the development of technologies, in this case, photonics technologies, closer interaction between industry and universities would have been a benefit. And a good example that might, comes to my mind is the rapid build out of fiber optics technology in the late 90s Companies were so busy developing product and deploying product that they had less and less time to work on the next generation of technologies that would become important three or four years later. Something basically had to fill that vacuum. You know, who is going to invent the next transistor? Who's going to invent the next laser? And so I think you know, you, the universities basically had to step in and serve, the, serve that purpose. But the difficulty is that in a university, you're, some, you're isolated from, from real world problems. It's not like you're not like down the hall from the guy who's actually working on, on trying to sell this product and has no direct access to his customer. And so you need some way of finding out what's an important problem to work on. SIPS, SIPS works because there is a very strong symbiotic relationship between the industry participants and the faculty. There are groups that are very heavily engaged where, you know, where they have graduate students that are SIPS funded, then they participate in working groups that meet every month. They're groups that are engaged in the sense that they help organize, you know, sessions at the annual meeting, and they're groups that are, you know, le less or less participatory, where you know they present posters at the annual meeting, and so in some sense, like you can basically scale your involvement depending on you know what what group of companies are involved, depending on what, what projects are really exciting. In many cases, the most important meetings for for generating new ideas and, and new concepts and, and diving into new problems is in fact these working group meetings where the industry people are describing what they describe, they, they see the problems with current technologies and what they would like to have solved. And the professors are describing what it is that they have done or could do relative to those problems. RLE has been wonderful in nurturing SIPs. They basically provided us the, uh, the, uh, the home for SIPs and some, some of the initial support as we are getting ourselves started. And, they, and to this day, they provide a lot of the administrative support that we need to operate the center. I think of SIPS as basically providing the community, and I feel like RLE basically provides the infrastructure. So what RLE does is, I mean, whether it's the labs, lab space, whether it's the, the people who actually, run, who actually manage the business of doing research, whether it's uh, people who basically figure out how to communicate our ideas to the outside world, that whole end-to-end -end infrastructure support is really what RLE provides. And so spending a lot of time on being, doing community building is something that the SIPS that basically complements RLE in doing. RLE is it's just a fantastic laboratory. It's very large, very diverse, and always looking for new ways that it, that it can contribute and add value and explore new frontiers. And I think getting involved with SIPS and helping create SIPS is one of those ways. SIPS is also sponsored by several of the other labs on the campus, and we have collaborative relationships with several other centers. So we feel like we're part of the larger MIT community, and RLE is a key reason that we can do all that. 
So one of the elements of community at MIT is really to bring the graduate students together. I mean, I love it when, their gra when my grad students basically come to me and say, oh, you know, I was at the seminar and I basically met someone who worked who, in a group that I didn't know about, actually working on something that really helps me. So I mean, I have, I have grad students who are in the clean room making a, a device and they learn a new process step because of one of the SIPs workshops that we had. And so that's great to me. I mean, that, that means that they've actually, they're connecting with the community. The companies that are investing in SIPs today, they're helping train these students to really care about industrial problems and help. And they're basically convincing these students that you can do state-of-the-art research and actually still be relevant for the things that are important today. I think it's, there's a lot of value to be had in having industry interact more closely with, with academia. A lot of it has to do with making sure industry is aware of, of the cutting edge and creative research going on at a university, and especially at MIT. But it's also important for, I think, the MIT faculty to have an opportunity to be exposed to what industry thinks are the key problems and the key issues as, that, as they select which direction they want their technology and their systems to move in. So it's an opportunity for the research community to have an exposure and a help in selecting which technologies are most likely to have the biggest impact in the shortest time frame. There are a lot of creative people here at MIT. I mean, there's more, there's more stuff, I mean, there are more researchers and there's more exciting stuff happening here than any one organization knows about, that any one group of people would expect to be coming out of a single university. And I think, you know, I think it's a privilege at SIPS to be able to represent all these different groups to the outside world. And I think, you know, if, if a company basically comes to MIT, it's almost impossible that they won't see things that they've never heard of.